we're in Malaysia and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to show you guys what gear we use and what cameras and things like that because uh, apparently a lot of you have been asking just because we've been saying you need to show everybody what kind of stuff we use to film all our videos and in our house it's just kind of all over the place using this opportunity, the fact that it's all been packed up in my nice rucksack. I was going to go show you how everything fits into it but it's pretty dull I and mean, it's got a padded bag, it's got, it's got back access so you can put your, like, all your uh, cameras in safely, you know, anti-theft. It's got side access, so you get your camera out quickly when you're on the, you know, on the fly, when you're out and about in the field. It's got this front top bit, which is separate. You can put all your chargers and mic, cleaning kits, batteries, whatever, all that stuff, the boring stuff. And then it's got another little front pocket to put more batteries, because you can never have enough batteries. Filters, a new purchase of mine. I'm quite looking forward to using this. They don't really work so well in Brighton in the winter because there's no sunshine. So I've got a polarizing filter, takes the reflection of water um, so you can really get those really nice crisp, crisp sort of scenes of into the sea rather than all the sun reflecting off the sea. I've got a radiating filter to again, um, still get the detail of a bright sky but still have the forefront of the landscape in it. So yeah, planning to use these when we're in Thailand, um, up on the beach in Langkawi and so on. Okay, so that's the bag, done. Next we have the hard drives. We've got, we recently went to these two. We used to use just the normal HHD type. Um, which has got a moving part. Sorry if this is really boring, I know I've gone on about both of these a lot in a previous video. I think even, I think I kind of stole the limelight slightly in Jessica's birthday video when she just had her thumb bitten off by uh, Walter. But basically perfect, rugged, hard wearing, you can drop it, blah blah blah. Uh, really fast, um, expensive but worth it. Good. Uh, next thing, essential GoPro. Um, this is currently stuck on the glass thingy, so I think we just did a time lapse with this this morning. So we stuck it onto the window and um, attempted our first sort of sunrise time lapse. We might have to work on that. This is the only camera we have which is waterproof, so good for sea, pool, blah blah blah. So our audio, we used to use this primarily, um, which is the H1 Zoom. Um, it's really really good, and we still use it. You can plug in the Lavellia mic um, that this clips on, so then you can put this in your back pocket um, so it doesn't, and then have the camera sort of positioned quite a long way away but still have good audio. Thing is, you have to sync it up with your um, video. So, because it's not directly linked to the camera, you just have to have some kind of auto, you know, um, like a, a snap, a snap, a clap, or something like that, so that you can sync it up. You know, like that old fashioned. Um, wooden boards that they use. So that's exactly what that's for. Kind of looks a bit like a microphone, but I think it would look a bit naff if you just sort of did your vlogs using this. Oh, lots of people ask how, like, who takes your photos when it's both me and Jessie in them? Well, there's this clever thing called a remote, a must-have for people who are on their own and don't have a, you know, photographer that's constantly following them around. They're quite small, they're easily lost, that's why we have two, because we thought we lost one, then we bought another one, and then we found the other one. But that's just how things happen in our house. Still put it on timer because you got you don't want a picture of you doing this. That's gonna look naff. So you put it on a two second or whatever you want. Press it, then you got like a couple of seconds to get into shot. Get this out of the way. Cameras are the main thing. So we used to shoot with a Sony Alpha 5000, which was really really good. Perfect sort of vlogger's camera, had a flip screen so you could see what you were doing, had a good internal mic, you could change the lenses. But the reason we changed from that to um, Canon was because even though it had a good internal mic, there was nowhere to put an external mic. Most of the Canon cameras have an external mic input, so then you can attach it at the top and then put your mic in here and then it all syncs up so the audio and visual files already in sync because it's all recorded at the same time. So unlike with the Sony where we had to often use this to get good audio and then sync it all up, we now can just do it all in one which is so much easier. This is the Canon 70D, so we bought that for that reason, but also the other reason we got this is because it's got really really good facial recognition and facial tracking, so it always makes sure that your face is the thing in focus, and that's why we have sometimes had those awkward like 
try to get our hand in first and so on. The camera we're currently filming on now is the same, it's the Canon M6. It's got the same kind of software as this, it's just smaller, it's a mirrorless camera, um, which I'll show you now. Okay, so I've just swapped cameras. So I'm now filming on the Canon 70D, which I showed you, to show you what I was previously filming on to show you the rest of the stuff, which was on this, which is the Canon M6. Um, it's the mirrorless one, so it's a little bit smaller, which is quite a lot smaller. And this is currently with the 24mm lens, which is what we were filming on just now. So at the moment I've got the kit lens on set to 24 to sort of replicate similar, but it's probably, you can probably see a slight difference in quality, it's probably not quite as crisp, I think so, anyway. And in order for this type of lens to fit onto this type of camera, you have to get an adapter, so we've got this adapter here. Again, I think that was only like £20 or something, and it worked perfectly fine. And then on top of this, we have this ginormous uh, microphone, the same size as the camera pretty much, but it's really light, it's just all fluff, like this is just like one massive fluff ball. And that is a big wind muffler, and that's why the sound comes out a lot clearer with this, which you may also notice the difference because I've currently taken it off. So again, quite good example of the difference of quality so this was with the previously it was with the prime lens and with an external mic now it's with just a kit lens and internal mic the other advantage of using this is as i said the canon 70d is too big to just carry around for me, even for myself to be honest for filming it's fine for photos when you're holding it up close to your face you've got stability but when you're holding it out um turned on yourself that's just it's too heavy and we use it with um, the Gorillapod. And this is just a, st I think this is the mirrorless Gorillapod, so it's a smaller one than most YouTubers use. It's not designed for DSLRs like the Canon 70 d because it just wouldn't, it doesn't hold the weight. But the reason we chose this one is because this is really light, as little as possible to carry around. So when this is all attached, so this is the perfect weight for, and, um, you know, it's light enough for Jessica. And I'm sure most of you who watch the channel would know why Jessica, she's not just like a weakling, she has a connective tissue disorder, um, suffers from chronic fatigue, so she has a lot of muscle wastage, doesn't have the strength that, you know, someone her age would normally have. So um, we've got to think about things like that and take things like that into consideration of what gear we use and what's practical, which is what everyone who is filming and taking photos will think about, but we have to take that to the next level. So, this is a good setup for us. I mean, to be honest, we could probably go lighter than this, but then we might be sacrificing on our video quality. So, um, you yeah, know, slight, slight no pain, no gain aspect in it as well. So the Canon 70D, a little bit more about this. I mean, I pretty much covered it. The only thing with this, it's quite big, as you can see. It's perfect for my photography, because it's got a viewfinder. A little bit cumbersome for when we're walking around and that's the main thing that Jessica found it's just too heavy for her like maybe I could get away with it and people like Peter McKinnon who walk around with like a 1D or whatever it is it's absolutely huge you know but he's got biceps like me and Jessica don't have the luxury of having biceps the lens currently on this is the 50 millimeter I got this as a birthday present from my girlfriends Thank you, Clara, Evelina, Andrea, Naomi, Vicky, very nice. It's a must have for everyone who's into photography and filming, because for photography it does really good portraits. Um, it's that really nice working distance, and then you get that nice blurry background, so it makes the person or whatever your photographer, whatever you're taking a photo of, in the foreground just like pop out. You'll find that with prime lenses, so a prime lens being that it's it's a set thing, so it's 50 millimeters. So you can't zoom in and out. You, if you want to like get a wider shot, you're just going to move yourself. So that's why it's slightly limiting. So when you're filming at home with it, so when Jessica's filming with this at home, she has to set the tripod up a certain distance away to, to get enough of her head in frame. So that's quite limiting in a way. So for that reason, even though this is perfect for B-roll whilst you're out and about when you've got more space to play with, it's not so good inside the house when you've got limited uh, you know, dimensions in your room and you can only put your tripod so far away. Another prime lens we have is the 100mm lens. This is a massive, massive thing, but it is my probably my 
favourite lens, along with maybe the 50, because I really love the blurry backgrounds it produces. And with this, because it's a macro lens, you can get really, really close. And actually what I bought it for was uh, my dentistry, so that I could get like up close and personal to people and record their teeth. And then I realised, actually, you know what, this is probably a really good camera to take out and about, and rather than taking pictures really close up of Jessica's spots and teeth and things that people don't really want to see, I thought if we just stand a little bit further away, actually you can get that same similar thing that you do with a 50mm, where you have really clear portraits and a really, really, really nice, like, soft focus at the back. Um, if you want to buy a lens that takes really good photos and really transforms your photography, I'd recommend a 100mm or like an 85mm lens um, if you want to go slightly step above a 50mm. Uh, so obviously this is a bit more expensive and a bit more hefty than a 50mm lens, but it, it's almost like double the quality, I'd say. Uh, we have um, the zoom lenses, which are the kit lenses that both the cameras came with. So this is the one that came with the um, 70D. It's an 18 to 55 millimeter. It's great. It's light, you know, and you know, if you don't have to keep moving the tripod. You can just um, zoom in or out to get what you want in frame. So it's a bit more versatile in that way. This is the kit lens or the zoom lens, which came with the M6, um, a 15 to 45 millimeter. So again, kind of wide angle to nice kind of natural sort of portrait angle. So really good again for vlogging. Um, and also what's nice about this is there's no, um, it has autofocus, but there's no like internal, I don't know, it doesn't do this like weird focusing thing, which the prime lenses do. Um, so it's completely silent. So it's, it's better in a way um, for filming out and about when you're changing what's in focus because you don't pick up on that um, background um, lens sound. Um, which can get a bit interfering and irritating, especially when you're not using the external mic. I was like, I'm going to keep this one short. <laughs> what is this, you ask? Um, this is amazing. This was like 20 quid or something from Amazon. Um, I don't know the technical name. I think it's like a three-axis bore head something. I should know, I don't know. But basically, um, you attach it to the tripod, which we're currently using, and um, you loosen this, and that does your 360 kind of um, panning shots. And this one does your 180 panning shots. And this again was one of my, my favorite discoveries and purchases, because one, it was really quite cheap, and it transformed our videos. Um, for instance, we used this in the most uh, recent lookbook we debated whether or not we should bring this with us to Malaysia because it's quite hefty, but um, I think without it we'd realise we'd be really frustrated by the sudden step back in the quality of our videos. Ta -da! Okay, this is not that exciting, this is just a black bag, but inside this black bag... Ta -da! Yeah! <laughs> it's my drone! Yeah! Jessica promised me that um, she would get me a drone as a, a thank you for all my contribution to her videos. And Not because she loves you. And because she loves me, she's just interjected. And to be honest, like, she didn't need to thank me with this for doing her videos and things because obviously it's, it's like a passion of mine as well and I love doing it. So the Spark, it's tiny, as you can see. Um, we got the remote as well because I just thought it'd be easier. You can use it with your phone, so you can just uh, literally control it with your phone um, if you just download the app. But also, you can control it with your hands, which is really amazing. And when Jessie saw that, she was like, oh, and she kind of went all a bit geeky on it too, so that was good. You get this up in the air, it's got this little camera here, and it, fa it scans your face, and then it suddenly recognises, I don't know if it recognises your face specifically, it just recognises that you are a face. And then it can also scan your hand, and then with your hand you can direct it, so it kind of like, you know, tracks your hand, and then you can give it sort of signals, you can tell it to start recording, you can tell it to take a selfie, you can just basically set this up, and it can track um, Jesse and I, and make it look like we've got our own personal, like, helicopter photographer. So I think that's pretty awesome. 
and you'll be able to see more about this and when we bought it and us trying it out and the guide like giving two complete novices a tutorial on it um, in the vlog that came out on Sunday. So you can go check that one out. If you have any questions on any of the stuff I just showed you, um, I think I kind of went through it fairly thoroughly, but to me it's kind of like, yeah, this is that. So if it didn't make sense and you're like, can you just clarify on that, then just ask and I will try and comment back. Again, I'm not great at answering comments, but I'm sure Jessica will help me because she's really good at it. Comment below what you thought of the video, if you want to know anything else like that, or other videos like this. Um, and uh, yeah, we better get cracking with our day. And join us on our travels whilst we're currently in Malaysia and hopefully stick around for when we're back in Brighton doing the normal stuff that we do. And maybe more like gear gadgety stuff because that's what I like doing. Um, you know, so if that's what you like watching too, then you know, let me know and maybe we'll do some more of this kind of stuff. Okay, bye.